While Walt Disney is credited for producing the first color animated feature, the Fleischers tried to convince Paramount to let them make a full-length feature long before Snow White hit the scene. However, during that time, they were allowed to make three Technicolor two-reel shorts starring Popeye that had him appearing in new takes on classic Arabian stories. The results were quite possibly Popeye's finest adventures to set sail. The first color special, titled Popeye the Sailor meets Sinbad the Sailor, was released in 1936 and was the only cartoon featuring the Sailor Man to be nominated for an Academy Award, which I think this film should have won. Even though it was much longer than the average Popeye short, the pace and humor was still intact. Of course, it's a standard plot of olive oil getting kidnapped by a brute, and Popeye has to come in with spinach or blazing to beat him senseless. Dave Fleischer and his artists did a splendid job of expanding the story and creating a real three-act structure. Jack Mercer provides Popeye's usual hilarious mutterings, and the animators are really given the chance to experiment. The Fleischers are always big on three-dimensional backgrounds to set the action, and there are some tremendous shots, especially as Sinbad walks through his island. The physicality is in full on display, with the usual rubber hose animation I love in the Fleischers' work. The timing of every punch and the way the animators put Popeye and olive oil into every possible position is stunning, and the creativity of the creatures that appear on the island is also great. It's probably no surprise that Ray Harryhausen was a huge fan of Popeye the Sailor meets Sinbad the Sailor, and it influenced some of his later work. Even Wimpy is given some funny side moments in this cartoon. This is a hugely innovative short from the Fleischers, and the strong mark of quality would continue in the next two color classics. A year later, Popeye the Sailor meets Alibaba's 40 Thieves premiered, and the short had even more of the awesome slapstick and amazing visual appeal of its predecessor. There is not a single frame of this cartoon that is not filled with fast-paced, wonderfully cartoony animation. One of my favorite bits is definitely when the thieves are buzzing through a cafe with Popeye stuck in the middle. The motion is stunning, as is the usual squash and stretch. In one particularly inventive scene, Popeye even turns Wimpy, Olive Oil, and himself into a human wheel in order to survive in the desert. And using the elastic animation to enhance the characters, Fleischer has Wimpy think of an hilariously funny way to eat some chickens from right under Alibaba's nose. It's shorts like this that are why I love animation, as it showcases the endless possibilities and lack of real-world physics that find their way into the medium. The final two-reel Popeye cartoon was Aladdin and His Wonderful Lamp, which is bookended by a clever story in which Olive Oil is a working screenwriter at a movie studio. If you're familiar with the basic Aladdin story and the Disney version, it should all be familiar how the Fleischers tell it. However, the fun in this short is how they use it to create some very inspired gags. Popeye is basically himself in the Aladdin role, but it's impressive how well he plays it. The use of modern 1930s devices is hilariously used, especially in Escalator, and how the villain utilizes more current lambs. The genie is more of a basic plot device in this cartoon, and I'm not sure why he sounds and acts like a German Edwin, but we're watching this for Popeye in olive oil. The fast pace is definitely on display, and it's funny when Popeye launches into cartwheels upon falling for Princess Olive. Olive's spaghetti arms are also perfectly used in a gag involving a typewriter. I watched this short many times on video when I was younger, and its humor has not lost any of its comedic power, and now that I'm older, I even appreciate the animation a lot more. It was announced a while back that Gendy Tedakovsky had been hired to direct a computer-animated Popeye movie and they could not have picked a more perfect animator to put in charge of it. Why? Well, back in the 1930s, while Disney was deservedly acclaimed for making animation more cinematic, the Fleischers were innovative in other ways, too. They seemed to operate on the idea that because of the limitless capabilities of animation, they could do anything with the medium, and that there were basically no rules unlike the more restrictive area of live-action filmmaking. They operated on a different law of physics, and the characters could go as wild as they wanted in any position. That was the beauty of the Fleischer's work. Something you may or may not know about me is that I love the animation I watch to be as expressive as possible. I adore when an animator takes full advantage of the medium and makes the characters as over the top and out there as possible. Of course, it depends on what approach the artist wants to do. 
but for a highly comical and madcap creation like Popeye, I don't want the director to hold back. Tartakovsky follows that same idea of animation. He proved with Hotel Transylvania that he could use that approach in CG animation, and recently an animation test for the Popeye feature film was officially released, and I absolutely loved it. The fast pace, the rubber hose animation, and even the backgrounds are all right out of a classic Fleischer Brothers cartoon, particularly the Popeye ones. When Robert Ullman directed his live-action Popeye movie, he chose the perfect actors to play those roles. But as fantastic as Robin Williams and Shelley Duvall were as Popeye and Olive Oil, they obviously cannot do the same acrobatic and impossible feats as their cartoon counterparts. With animation, Tartakovsky has the freedom to do what he wants. So we have a return to the squash and stretch and exaggerate expressions when they are pounded, and Olive Oil flapping her arms out as wildly as only she can. There are even nice little subtle touches, like how Olive's mouth sticks out slightly, much like her hand-drawn version did. There is no set release date, but hopefully they announce it soon, because I cannot wait. So, before this new Popeye hits screens, check out those classic shorts, and then you'll see how faithful Tartakovsky's being to the originals. See you next time.